and welcome to another edition of Lab Rats. My name is Andy Walker. I'm Sean Carruthers. And this is a show where we demystify technology, teach you tips that are so valuable you could take it to the store and cash it in for lots of money. How come we haven't been doing that? Oh, good point. Well, I guess that's what advertising is for. I guess. There you go. Today on the show, very exciting topic. Can't wait to do this because it's one of those things that people think they can do and they sometimes run into problems. Can you imagine what it is? I can think of a few things that <laughs> answer that question. No, it's, it's, I get this question quite often. Mm -hmm. I have a laptop or I have a computer and I want to get the picture on there onto my TV, right? And once upon a time, it was expensive and difficult to do. Today, it's not so hard, mm -hmm. um, but a bit complex at times and you can run into some trouble. There are a few issues again, yes. Right. And given the fact that we're pulling you know, content in from the internet, you know, we're watching home videos, we're doing all kinds of stuff, you kind of want to put that little picture on that big screen, right? You really do. So today we're going to show you how. Yeah, I mean, in the past we've looked at some gadgets that actually uh, stream some of your content or do specific video that attach directly to your TV. But why would you spend your money on that when you already Don't have the notebook? Don't spend your so money. This is an alternative way to do this. This is a, the free way. This is like the, it's going to cost you nothing. Well, well almost nothing. Almost nothing. Almost nothing. All right. So let's take a break. When we come back, how to connect your laptop to your TV. Today on Lap Rats. Well, welcome back to Lab Rats. Uh, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about one of our fantastic, friendly sponsors that helps pay the bills here. IKEA and their rats? Well, it's not sponsored by, uh, by Ikea. But they got new white rats now, too, you know? Okay, enough. Shut up. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Hover.com, our good friends over there. That's where you get your domains. You can register your own personal email addresses. You can get domains to, to forward them, uh, to shorten a long URLs, to short URLs. And recently, they started offering two new types of domains, .me and .co. So uh, I registered andywalker.me which is kind of a fun little pointer, right? Yeah, I registered Sean Carruthers dot me as well. Did you? Yes. And apparently Mr. I did Matt Harris dot me. Matt Harris registered Matt Harris dot me and a bunch of others, right? You did something for your mom. Is it I that did. easy? Yes, it is that easy. My mom now has her own website. So there you go. So if, if Matt Harris can register domains for his mom, then <laughs> you can too on hover.com. And to make it real easy for you guys, uh, we're going to give you 10% uh, off with this coupon code right here on this screen. So use that code, uh, enjoy the discount, and go get yourself a .me or a .co or register something for your mom. Because just like you know, if Matt Harris can do it, anybody can do it. Use the on deck code. Use the on deck code. Okay, well, go over to on deck and get the code over there if you want instead. All right, that's it. Very good. So let's uh, get on with the show. Okay, I have to stop playing with my toys now. Yeah, you're armless. Yeah, rat. Do you, do you remember this? This poor guy had his arms amputated. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about connecting your laptop to your TV. Now, this is, a, I guess, a two-part kind of story, right? Right. There's the output bit, stuff, information coming out, or the connector coming out of the laptop. Yes. And then there's the input bit, the, the connector going into the TV. Yes. All right. So let's take a look at both. Okay, so what do you want to do? you want to start with uh, the output bit, I guess? Let's first. take a look at the, the computer. So the first yeah. thing you need to know is how your computer interacts with the world. So there's, yeah. um, on most notebook computers, there's one of two main ways that they've done this in the past, so if you've got an older machine. Uh, one of them is called VGA, and uh, we've actually got a VGA connector right, right here, here on, uh, on this uh, computer right here. The people who've had desktops would be f very familiar with that connector there, because of right. course that's how you traditionally, you know, your big monitor you connected yeah. to your large, your, your desktop computer. Right, so that's the, the analog output. Uh, it uh, can do, you know, high definition signals on it. Uh, but it's analog, so it's not necessarily as precise as a digital signal would be. So on some notebooks, mostly Mac these days, uh, the professional end, but uh, it was like this on some higher end uh, Windows notebooks as well, it was DVI. DVI, right. And that's digital video interface. So most people aren't going to be able to tell the signal quality difference between the two of these things. Mm -hmm. Uh, with a quick glance, although the digital nature of the DVI makes it a little bit more precise, so potentially it could lock in the signal faster and, and better, but for the most part you're not going to be able to tell. Okay, so, so VGA is possible, DVI if you have that. That's also possible. And then what else? On a growing number of notebooks, back, back to this one again, beside, uh, beside our old DVI connector we have an HDMI connector. Now this is uh, actually designed strictly for television sets. So the other ones were for uh, computers beforehand and a lot of uh, monitors or television sets in the flat panel digital age have used those computer connectors on the back as well. Mm -hmm. But HDMI is strictly for the new television age. So, so it was really designed to connect your laptop to your TV? 
Yes, or some sort of multimedia projector that is designed to work with your other TV components right. like DVDs and uh, and your gaming consoles. Okay, good. And then what about mini DVI? I've seen that around. What's that? Uh, mini DVI is something you might see on some notebooks, uh, especially from Mac, uh, on the back of, say, uh, an iMac computer. Uh, they had these for a while, these compact ones that looked like a little C connector with a, uh, with well, it looked pretty much like this. So you've, uh, that's a little preview of uh, the, the connectors that we're going to show off. But they, they had a thing that looked like the inverse of this. And we'll, we'll show a picture of the, the back of a notebook that has that as well. OK, good. And then uh, more old school, I guess, and this is probably less laptops and more uh, uh, desktop computers. And there's like you know, S-Video out. Right, so if you have an old uh, desktop or an old notebook even, yeah, there were was, there was some notebooks that had uh, S-Video, which is uh, the yellow connector that you'll see on a lot of... Uh, no, 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 it's, it's the round connector, right? Uh, it's so, old, old VHS. Oh, so yeah, yeah, the, the, the composite. So the, there's, there's the round one with the little pins. That's, yeah, that's S-Video. That's S-Video. And then there's a composite. And the, the two generally go together on a lot of cards. So if you've got like a desktop with uh, an ATI all in Wonder card, you'll often yeah. have both of those things beside each other. And the yellow one's is it composite? And the yellow yeah, one is called composite, composite or RCA video. Yeah. Video will only right. right, very good. And that's more old school. Yeah. Okay, good. And, and All right. Again, it'll look like the inverse of this. There you go. Very good. Okay, so uh, now we should mention that with all these connectors, um, they, none of them deal with audio except for HDMI. Right. So HDMI is, as you said, something that has both audio and video. And up until recently, they had uh, the audio handled separately on these connectors. And generally on, on the notebooks, you'll have a, a headphone jack. Uh, output there. Some of them will also support uh, support digital optical using a special uh, adapter cable. Um, most of the PC notebooks you'll see will just strictly have a headphone output jack and that's what you'll use to get your audio out to the right. television. Don't forget though of course I mean the laptops can be relatively close to your TV obviously mm -hmm. on a cable so you can actually use your laptop speakers potentially uh, or you could you know plug a set of speakers into your laptop directly as well yeah I mean it depends on how high quality the speakers are on your uh, on your television set you may not even need them so right okay good all right and let's talk about the inputs on a, on the television side of things because right. obviously we have to match those okay so let's, let's pull this out of the way and bring the TV up get a hand here so dandy TV. yeah so here's our uh, Thanks to our, our friends from Demo TV for our Sharp. Sharp. Thank so you, Sharp. we've got on the back here, we've got all of these connectors that are designed strictly for component. Uh, you, uh, so things like your DVD. So they'll use something like this, the red, green, and blue. Yeah. Typically, you won't see this on your notebook. Right. Uh, as outputs. As so, outputs, no. yeah, so just get rid of that right off the bat. Yeah. You'll have uh, things right here like your HDMI connectors. Right. And uh, typically, you'll also have, uh, here we've got an S-Video here, as you mentioned. So yes. if you've got one of the old school ones, you can actually use it to get your video in there. And then all these red and white ones that are right next to each other, these are all audio connectors. Right, left and right stereo. Left and right, right. Uh, stereo. And there's a VGA connector there as well. There is a VGA here, yeah. So. If, and I know I would note that you don't see a lot of DVI connectors on the back of TVs. You do see on some of them. Yeah, you did for a while, but the, that sort of went away as more uh, notebooks uh, stopped using DVI output. Right. And we actually have on the side here we have uh, the yellow, uh, the composite input uh, that I mentioned as well. So not right. just the S video, but right the composite here. as well. So yeah. if you're using this for your Wii potentially. Yeah, you can unplug that and plug your notebook into it if you have only that output. Good. So. Okay, good. So now the magic is to connect up, is to match the output from the uh, computer with an input on the same cable or using a converter. Right. So any advice around that? Well, there's a, there's a number of uh, different cables out there. So if you've got uh, VGA on your notebook and VGA on here, it's a relatively straightforward process here. You've got uh, a VGA to VGA cable here. So right. Just bring these over here. A little bit messy. So again, VGA on one end, VGA on the other. You can connect straight from here to here. No and, brainer. And you're done. Then you need an audio connector audio. of some sort. So we have right here an audio connector that has the headphone jack on one end. Headphone jack out. And we've got audio left and right audio, in. RCA audio inputs. Right. So that is pretty cheap. You can get a cable like this for under $5 at uh, the Radio Shack or uh, your local source by Circuit City. And, uh, and then away you go. VGA cables, again, 10 bucks or less, typically. Um, get them a bit cheaper. Again, if you've got DVI on both ends, we've got the DVI cable. It's got DVI on both ends. 
hook one end to your computer, like your, your MacBook, and hook the other end to the back of your TV if it has it. Don't forget picture only, so you'll also need picture the audio. Picture only, so you'll also need the audio connector yeah. as well for that. And it's worth noting, we don't have one of them here, but you can get cables that have this on one end and this on the other, so that if you need to convert from one to the other, oh, is it right? you can actually yeah. do that with an with a adapter cable, and again, not too much more expensive. Right, got it. Right? So, once okay. you got those two together, you've also got... Uh, well, we've got the HDMI cable. So if you got the this HDMI, this is my favorite because this yeah. is probably the simplest solution going. Right. It is the simplest solution because, as you said, it has both audio and video. If you've got it on the notebook already, this is the quickest and easiest way to get the two connected. So it also supports high definition also signals. Also supports high definition. Uh, so we've got one on one end, plug it into your notebook, plug the other end into one of your many HDMI ports on here. Okay. So that's simple. Now, getting a little bit trickier. We have uh, a few adapter cables, and I've seen some of these from Extreme Mac and some more generic solutions as well. Here's one that has DVI on one end yeah. for your notebook, yeah. and on the other end, H it's HDMI. got HDMI. Oh, that's good. Yeah. And that, that will plug into your TV, so it'll convert that. Now, these are often a little bit more expensive because they're slightly more... Uh, they're doing some technology ma magic inside the cable. Yeah, a little bit of it, yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there's, it's a digital signal on both ends, but... And now, the downside of this... No audio, so you need to bring the audio cable back into the equation, so plug this back in. So it's still two cables, even though you're going HDMI in this case, because it's only HDMI on one end. Right. All right? Makes sense. Okay. Okay. Right. Um, what else do we what have here? What about dongles? Dongles. Do you so about dongles? I guess dongles are really really conversation for PC users. For the Mac, it's a big deal, because you have that single connector with multiple outputs, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, th this can be uh, useful as well for, for, for both uh, types of users. So we've got this one dongle right here, which converts... As we said, it, it's the same as the cable I was just talking about with DVI on one end and VGA on the other, but this is just a much shorter interface, a, a, a gender switcher, basically, or a, 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 a transvestite format. cable? Yes, <laughs> yes. So a format switcher. Uh, so there's, there's that. And then you've got these interesting little things right here. So if you've got an older school television set that doesn't have any of these fancy new inputs, and all it's got is the, uh, the composite and the uh, S-video, uh, then you can convert it from either VGA or DVI. We've got the uh, DVI version of it here. Mm -hmm. right. now, these, are, uh, these are Apple, they're sold at the Apple Store, right? Th those are sold at the Apple Store. They're generally around 30 bucks. Uh, some of them are a little bit more expensive well, depending on the how Apple much tax for hardware. The well, you, the, here's the thing is you're not really paying the Apple tax for these ones because in a lot of cases to do this on a PC, uh -huh. you need a special device, like an, an output device that so connects by USB. Deal. It could be a deal. Thanks, Steve Jobs. We love you so. <laughs> if only you really meant it. But no, and, and there, there are some devices you can use to actually convert your signal on a PC. Right. You can use a USB to do output. So I know that uh, ADS Tech had some devices like that. But there are a bunch of others that are like that. A little bit more expensive, potentially. Right. And one last one here. As we mentioned, some of the earlier notebooks uh, from the Apple side had that uh, special connector. There was one that had a single line in here, uh, a single ridge. Of a connector, this one it doubles What's over it like called? that. It, this is a mini DVI. A mini DVI. Mini DVI. Yeah. And, and then we've got again the uh, the S, S video and uh, and the composite output here. Okay. Now the cables, the solutions, connect them all together. Not necessarily the ultimate solution. Like it's not as if this problem is going to completely go away because there's always the weird world of technology magic gone bad. Yeah. Resolution is so an issue, right? Resolution can be an issue. Now. If you notice on your notebook these days, most of your notebooks are set up in a different configuration than your TV is. So yes. uh, a lot of TVs come in 1080p or 720p, and that means like 1280 by 720 is your resolution. Pixels. And your notebook often is 1280 by 800, which doesn't quite match. That's too many pixels to fit onto that screen uh, totally. if it's only 720p. It's like being in one city and getting like a dozen eggs and like in 12 eggs in a dozen, and another city getting seven. Like, well, in this city, we do seven. Yeah, I know, but it's eggs. Come on, it's standardized here. I guess the TV manufacturers and the computer manufacturers are different companies, right? They think yeah. different. A little bit different. Got but uh, okay. So what can you do about it, though? Uh, well, the, the, the problem and the solution. The problem is that often cases, when you send this out to your TV, you have to figure out, first of all, am I going to mirror this so that this is the same thing on both ends? Uh -huh which means then you have to have this compromise between what you can see. I'm pointing to that one, but I might as well point to this one. Let's turn this one around. So 
you want to compromise between the resolution of this one and the resolution on your notebook screen yeah. and find the closest thing that both of them can handle right. properly. One's going to output, yeah. So you may end up with black bars in some places or zoomed in too far to the picture so that some of this stuff some is missing. Some might be cropped. Yeah. And uh, there's also the possibility that you'll, you'll end up with a little picture in the middle of your TV it's screen for, yeah. or on the notebook. So, or it might just be squashed in a very unfortunate, unviewable condition. Yeah. So that's one of the problems. The, the solution, one of the solutions is to make this extended desktop instead of mirrored. Okay. So what that means is setting it up as a second monitor on here. Oh, we have some uh, tutorials on Butterscotch to show you how to use an external monitor as an extended desktop. You can do the same with your TV as well as a monitor. Right. Um, and then you just push all of the content that you want to watch over to this side and, and then use the other side as your control panel, more or less. I got it. So that's, that's one way to deal with the issue. Yeah. Um, the second way to deal with the issue is to use HDMI wherever possible because it will it'll create that direct connection between the two. Now, it's not always 100% perfect. You might end up with <laughs> a picture mismatch mm -hmm. again. Often you can go on the TV into the menu system and stretch the picture out, choose to scale yes. it, and it will take the signal that's coming in and just zap it right out yeah. to the edges. On your remote control, there'll be a setup button or mm -hmm. something like that, and you can access, modify the picture. Right. And you like, I think it's called stretch or, I can't remember this, but four different settings yeah. sometimes. Right? Yeah, it depends on the manufacturer and the remote itself. So, right. so look for that on your remote just to, to be sure that, uh, that you can adjust it that way. And uh, there's, there's often an aspect ratio uh, setting on, on the thing. So, well, so if you've got an old notebook that's four by three, and you're putting it onto your 16 by 9 television like this, it may be stretching it out in an unfortunate way. So you can set the aspect ratio on the TV and it'll snap it back into the proper picture orientation and people won't all be stretchy. I got it. Very so cool. So that's one way to deal with it. There you go. It's that easy. Cables in and out and then a uh, little, little technology goofing around in there to, to solve your problem. But it's a very cheap way to get one picture onto your gorgeous big screen. Let's take a break. When we come back, we've got Clip of the Week and also Picture Time. That's after this. Well, welcome back to Lab Rats. Ta -da! Yeah, we're still here. Um, well, now we're going to have a look at the clip of the week. Every time, every show, we generally show you a clip from the Butterscotch.com portfolio. There's more than 3,000 pieces of video over there that you can uh, go and enjoy so you can learn more about technology like you do on this fantastic show with Mr. Crothers and I. Um, so this week, we're going to show you a, uh, a, a new show we have called How Do I? And we're going to show you how to swap out your hard drive onto your laptop because maybe if you're going to connect it to your TV, you're going to need a bigger hard drive to contain more movies. Yes. Good. So let's uh, have a look at that clip when we come back. Picture time. Welcome on deck. I'm Matt Harris. Hi, I'm Jay Goldman. Welcome to the A-List. Hi, welcome to Miss Download. With the old school black or white MacBook, the first thing you want to do is take out the battery. Now you'll notice along the edge of the battery compartment, there's a metal guard with screws on it. Unscrew the three different screws on the metal guard and ease the metal guard gently out. You'll see on the one side there is a slot that has the hard drive. Grab the pull tab and slide the drive out gently. Well, welcome back. Once again, if you want to see that entire clip, the entire show, all kinds of different episodes on how do I check out butterscotch.com. It is your most favorite place to go for internet technology learnings. Yes, don't you think? It's mine. <laughs> All right, on to the, uh, the, the, the you part of the show. Uh, it's time for picture time. Is it still picture time or is it video time? Uh, no, actually, before we get to picture time, I, I do want to show off a couple things because we, we should talk about a couple things around this. So first of all... Oh, we, you haven't done with the segment yet. Oh, okay, I get it. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah, yeah, so, Tell them. So there's a couple things. Um, as Matt points out, because he's hooked his, uh, his notebooks and computers up to the uh, TV a, a couple of times as well, one way that you can deal with this is going into your control panel, either on the Mac or the, uh, or the PC. So that would be the um, system preferences on the Mac, it's called, and control panel on there. So go into your display settings, and uh, it'll give you a, a little slider bar that you can uh, move around. But there's also generally a, a way to auto-detect your monitors. And when you auto-detect the monitors, it'll ask over the, the cable, hey, what are your settings? What, uh, what kind of resolution do you have? So if it doesn't know this ahead of time, it can pull it in and say, ah, that's the resolution I should be using. And then it'll look a little bit better than potentially using some generic idealized monitor that doesn't actually exist in the TV world. 
Uh, the second thing you can do is if you're having a problem and it's still not working, uh, sometimes you can go to the manufacturer of your TV and actually get a driver for your computer that will allow you to drive that uh, resolution properly. So it'll know how to snap one to the other and it'll actually be perfect. Uh, now this won't work on your 1987 Sony. It won't work on your old 1987 Sony, but all, all the new ones that actually double as monitors, a lot of them do have drivers available on the website that will allow you to communicate properly between mm. the two for Super fun. a better picture. That's very clever. And do you want to show one other thing that uh, you can do as well? Yes. We've been talking about using your notebook. You can also use it with your iPad. So I've got uh, a little dongle here that has a VGA connector uh, output. Yeah. And it connects into the bottom of my iPad show so that off. I can uh, actually show my videos on TV from the iPad. Oh, how exciting is that? It's pretty wow. exciting. It, it, it actually, now what would be nice, with your notebook, you can display anything that you show off on there. This one is just, it pushes it out over this you know, only in certain circumstances, right. so your videos or whatnot, but you won't be able to see everything you do on there, so. Don't you think dongle's a dirty word? It does sound a little bit Sounds dirty. Like a dirty word. Yes. Okay, all right, uh, are you done? Yes. Okay, <laughs> all right. Picture time, I've been desperate for picture time the entire episode, because I know this is a good one. Isn't yes. It? Isn't it? I hope it is. It is a good one. They're always good. Yeah, they're always good. They're always good. So yeah, this so one well. is from our friend Sumu. Sumu. I love Sumu Repel. Name. And uh, he actually went to Old Faithful. Oh, right. And he's got a picture of Old Faithful going off in the background and Lab Rats in the foreground. Nice. So where's the Old Faithful? I guess Old Faithful it's is probably sleeping. right behind oh, his right head there. there. So it's Whoa. just starting. It's not, uh, not quite so big yet. Love it. Good so. job, Sumu. All right, Thank well, you can send your that. pictures to us if you want to get it on the show, too. Dongle isn't as dirty a word as Andy thinks he is because he's actually eight years old inside at labrats.tv. <laughs> Lot to spell, so you might want to try more simply. Feedback at labrats.tv. Mm -hmm. Very good. All right, well, thank you, Mr. Carlos, for your uh, revelation of the world of laptop connecting to televisions. I thought that was very exciting. Thank you for your insight on dongles. I think you have a PhD in dongle dongleism, don't you? Uh, I, I am a master of dongleology. That's your dongleology, very good. All right, don't forget to zip on over to hover.com and get your 10% off a coupon right here on the screen uh, for your uh, domains.me.co.com, whatever. Um, and of course, butterscotch.com. You can't favorite. get that one, that one's taken. No, yeah, we own that, but uh, you may want to zip on over to that website and see uh, our massive library of technology to teach you how to use technology better, teach your grandma, and uh, feel you know, fantastic every day. All right, well, thank you so much for uh, tuning in this week, Pushing Play. It'd be foolish for, for us to be here without dongles if you aren't out there wondering about them. My name is Andy Walker. Sean Carruthers. We'll see you next time. Are you ready? Pictures do we have? One. One, okay. All right. Five, five, four, three. Well, welcome back to uh, Two Cows. No. Who? 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 Not Two Cows. Welcome back to Two Cows.